Hey, it's Lewis here and welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're going to be analysing Canadian National Railway stock. We'll be using fundamental analysis via ticker terminal, and then we'll put the numbers in my analysis checklist to see if the business is of good enough quality for me to be interested in. I'll then put the free cash flow into my DCF and we'll come to a fair value of their stock. Let's get straight into it. So who are Canadian National Railway? So CNR is a Canadian Class 1 freight railway headquartered in Montreal, Quebec, which serves Canada and the Midwestern and Southern United States. Uh, CNR is Canada, Canada's largest railway, both in terms of revenue and the size of its rail network. So it spans Canada from the Atlantic coast in Nova Scotia over to the Pacific in British Columbia. So yeah, it spans all across Canada and also goes into a bit of America as well. So. The company itself is listed in Toronto, as you'd expect, but it's also listed in New York as well. And fun fact for you, Bill Gates is the largest single shareholder of CNR, owning a 40% interest through his Cascade Investment Company and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Now let's have a look at the sales for CNR, so Canadian National Railway, and we'll look at the sales per business first. And yeah, there's quite a few bits going on here. So intermodal makes up 28%. Don't really know what that is. I'm guessing it just means transportation of some sort. Uh, petroleum and chemicals makes up 20%. Grain and fertilizers, 17%. Forest products makes up 12%. Metals and minerals, 11%. Coal, 4%. And the rest is other and automotive. 4 and 4% 4 respectively. Sales per region, so 69% of their sales come from Canada and 31% come from the United States. Now let's have a look at the financials for Canadian National Railway, um, CNR, I'll just use that as a bre an abbreviation, makes my life easier, not as a, much of a mouthful. Um, yeah, we'll start with the income statement, so revenues have increased over the past five or six years, not by much like um, single digit growth and a few years of negative growth. 2020, COVID, so let's just say a single digit growth um, ahead, which is what it is. Just You just want to grow with inflation at least and you'd be happy, I guess. Um, gross profit wise, solid margins, but net margins the most important, important one. Um, very high net margins here, like 2021, you're talking 34%, which is extremely high. Um, railway companies in the US are very profitable, um, which is something we love to see as shareholders. Um, right, okay. Shares outstanding, so are they, buy, uh, are they buying back shares? Ever so slightly, yeah. So we're buying back about 2% shares a year, apart from the last couple of years when we've probably needed the cash for COVID. Um, right, onto the balance sheet now. Cash on hand, we don't really have much cash on hand, like, do we? Um, if not, it's up, which is a good thing. Um, long term debt, so debt's increased slightly. You'd want to find out why. Um, not by much, though, so you can maybe bear with it a bit, but yeah, you just want to know what's going on there. Um, turned earnings, yeah, they've gone up very nicely as well, so no complaints. Cash flow statement, so. The main figure, cash flow from operations minus capex equals free cash flow. And yeah, you can see it's just slowly slowly increasing. Um, the capex doesn't really change too much from year on year, that much really. Cash flow operations has been slowly increasing bit by bit. Love to see it. Debt repayments, yep, repaying debts, repurchasing shares as we've seen, and paying dividends, and increasing the dividend as well, which is really good stuff. Ratios wise, I like ratios because it tells me a bit more of a story in financial statements. It tells me a bit more than what just numbers do on a screen. So return on capital, pretty solid, um, quite close to 15%. It's probably gonna come out near 15% on the average, let's be honest. So yeah, you know, decent returns on capital. Gross margins we spoke about, net income margins, very high. Then free cash flow margins are yeah, quite a bit different from net income margins. Probably do, there's a lot of capex in, to do with railroads. So something to bear in mind over time, you'd hope these would get similar, but maybe there's just a lot of capex with railroads and you can't get away from that. Um, liquidity wise, so current ratio, 
is above one, bearing in mind in the past it hasn't been above one, so just gotta keep that, you know, don't expect it to be above one forever if the past few years haven't, so maybe just a bit of an anomaly in 2021. Cash conversion cycle is very low indeed at 12 days, it's more like a software company rather than uh, they must take the cash, you know, a lot quicker than what the paying out invoices are, so decent stuff. Debt to capital ratio, 29%, love that, um, quite low debt to be honest, not to worry about. And yeah, so that's the financials from um, for seeing that on Ticket Terminal, if you want to use Ticket Terminal, link in the description below, use the link, um, have fun on Ticker, great platform if you look at individual companies and looking at the financials behind them. If you are enjoying today's video then why don't you book in a one-to-one -one coaching session with myself. In these sessions you will learn how to analyse a company using fundamental analysis. As well as this you will learn how to value a company using a DCF model. Value investing is the art of buying stocks which trade at a significant discount to intrinsic value. Value investors like myself achieve this by looking for companies on cheap valuation metrics, typically lower multiples of their profits, assets and cash flow as well for reasons which are not justified over the long term. Billionaire value investors such as Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger and Joel Greenblatt have all used these timeless concepts to beat the market over the long term. No financial advice will be given on these calls, financial statement analysis and business valuation education only. I will see you there. Now let's have a look at the generating impact stats for CNR, uh, Canadian, Canadian National Railway, and we'll look at the quality metri metrics first. And it's coming up as medium um, on GI, uh, profitability high, financial strength weak, capital allocation medium. So a bit of a mixed bag here. Um, Value-wise, looking expensive. I would agree, and you'll see you'll see in a bit why. Income statement expensive, balance sheet expensive, cash flow medium. So quite you know when genuine impact says it's expensive, it's time to take note in my view. Historical historical growth medium. Um, yeah, not much growth going on here. So now let's have a look at the analysis checklist for CNR, and we will start with my first pillar: so profitable, high returns on capital using low leverage. So yeah, returns on capital for this business are very solid, way above to fifteen percent. I like to see, can't complain. Cross profit margin way above forty percent. Net margins thirty two percent average. Very highly profitable business, something I love to see. Free cash flow margins a lot different to net profit margins. So something to bear in mind that over time these two figures should be the same um, over a long period of time We're talking probably 10 20 years but the amount of capex that goes involved with um railroads we have to keep reinvesting into their fixed assets so that's why there's a bit of a disparity there something to bear in mind though current ratio above one we'll take it but we've seen in the past it isn't so bear in mind we've spoken about this great cash conversion cycle a bit more like a software business rather than a railroad or industrial company as it's classed as Total debt to capital way above fifty percent. So yeah, I'm not worried about this business going out, you know, you know, going bankrupt. Let's just say that, which is obviously important, especially during times like these. Proven ability to grow. All apart from it, all apart from net income are in the green, and um, maybe an anomaly, but something to look into. Great capital allocation. So long term debt has risen a little bit. So. Yeah, you don't want it to go much further, but if you are growing quicker than the debt's growing, so if you can grow out of debt, you can maybe take on the chin a bit. Not every single metric's gonna be green. There's only a few companies which are gonna have everything green. Um, so you've got to bear that in mind. They've decreased the share slightly, grown the dividend and acquisitions wise, they've made gains on asset sales versus asset route down to goodwill impairment. They're not writing off they're not writing off lots of goodwill. That's a good sign in my book. Um, I hate it when companies write off goodwill willy nilly. It just means they're bad at allocating capital in the past and it means they'll probably do it in the future. So just stay away. That's just the way I see it. Buy at a fair price. So we want to buy companies at a fair price um, for many reasons. The lower you buy a company and the simple as the more returns you'll make. And just some basic metrics here P ratio of 21 and price free cash flow of 24. So below, way below, well, way below near enough where 20 is but for a company which isn't growing much 20 is a high p ratio simple as that so dcf valuation 10 percent return and coming to a share price of 63 dollars per share for the shares listed on the new york stock exchange it needs to drop 43 percent for me to be interested and um, so yeah 
um, coming at a share price of it's like 111 dollars 63 long way to go a long way to go before i'd be interested in um cnr i'll have a look at the dcf and see what what numbers i've put in these, these numbers are from marketsweeder.com, analyst estimates into the next three years, and then 2.5% growth into into eternity, essentially. Um, yeah, so not much growth at all going on. And yeah, I've got the Canadian share price as well, if you're interested. Um, but most people will just care about the dollar price, so $63. Yeah, not much to say, apart from it just looks overvalued. Um, if the company isn't growing, uh, quick rates, it doesn't deserve a P ratio of 20. Many reasons why this company could be up there. It could be seen as a pseudo a pseudo bond. Essentially what that means is, because Canadian National Railway is such a reliable company, it's likely never going to go out of business because of what it does, how stable it is, and it's got a consistent dividend. It gets called a pseudo bond, and the market's willing to pay more for it because that dividend is always going to be there essentially. But in my book, I don't work like that. There we have it. That was my full stock analysis for Canadian National Railway. And if you enjoyed today's video, then please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. As always, it would be amazing if you could like, comment and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. However, you can check out some of these videos.